please switch on your camera so that we can start. Yes, sir. Yes, uh, sorry. I was just setting it up. Yes, sir. So, how are you doing today? Yes, I'm doing well. I'm doing well. How are you doing today? Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. I'm fine. Thank you. So, we have uh, kept this session especially yes, just to, uh, you know, give you some tips about the SAT exam, which is going to take place tomorrow. Right? Yes, sir. Uh, so far, you have done four full length tests, and I believe you oh, did yes, all sir. with a great concentration, and you know your score very well. Mm, yes, sir. That is it. So, uh, more or less, the score that you are going to get after this real SAT, you know, is is something you know, it is completely in your hand as how much you would be able to raise your score. It is all a game of concentration and concentration and concentration. Right. You have a good brain and uh, all you need to, uh, you know, having done these four tests, now you are well acquainted with the test pattern. Right. You know the flow of the uh, test. Yes, you know sir. that uh, how the test proceeds and uh, you know uh, what type of pressure comes during the test. Right. Yes, and how to handle that. So how many questions are there in one paper of SAT? Um, I think it's around like a 114 or 130. 154 questions. Oh, 54, yeah. sorry. I don't... And uh, this is it. So for math, it will be approximately, uh, uh, for math, it is 48, uh, 58. And for English, it is 96 altogether, 154 questions. See, broadly, if you see the syllabus of SAT, there are six, uh, I mean, topics in SAT, uh, in mathematics, and there are nine topics in English, right? That is it. So at this point of time, there is no problem. You know everything. Now, uh, I would like to talk to you something regarding, you know, the thing before the SAT, right? I mean, these are very general things. But do you know where the test center is? Oh, yes, sir. It's uh, DPS. Have you seen that place? Oh, yes, sir. It's a school I go to. Okay. <clears throat> then it's fine. You know everything now. And this will definitely give you more confidence that you are in a very familiar place. You are not in a place which is not known to you. Okay. Is your test kit ready? My test kit, yes. I have a pack bag. Have you kept the admission ticket? Uh, yes, it's in a folder. Uh, photo ID? I mean, to uh, say a driving license or a non Oh, yes. I have ID. my wallet with me. Yes. Okay. A passport or your school uh, ID? Do you have that? Uh, no, they don't really ask for a school ID. For In Qatar, we just need to present like a QID. And that's okay. that's really enough. You also must keep your passport with you, right? Oh, okay, yes, sir. What about the calculator? Oh, yes, I have a calculator with me. Okay, at least four or five sharpened number two pencils to have. Oh, yes, sir. Erasers? Yes, sir. Okay, you know your test center where it is, right? Yes, sir. What about tonight? Uh, are you planning how, how much time would you be spending for a sleep, eight hours, nine hours? Um, I usually just, I naturally start feeling sleepy around 11, 11.30. So I think I'll just go to sleep then. And what time do you get up? Um, well, around 6.37, more likely 6.30. Fine. If you sleep by 11 a.m. and get up by 7 p.m., uh, 7, 11 p.m. and get up by 7 a.m., that would be fine. What yes, time the test is going to start? Um, usually it starts at around nine, but then my parents <laughs> want me there by like eight, eight thirty, eight forty-five. Eight thirty would be fine, right? Yes, now, uh, the thing is that, uh, what about the watch that you are going to uh, use in the test? Is it a uh, beep watch or? Uh, oh no, so it doesn't have any alarms on it. It's just a standard. Uh, yeah, just keep an uh, watch. accurate watch, right? Also, a small snack packet for some quick energy, right? Oh, uh, yes, sir. And uh, don't be late. Allow plenty of time for getting, uh, you know, to the test site. Yes, sir. And uh, if you, once you enter into the hall, just grab your seat, you know, whatever seat the invigilator has allocated to you and get relaxed before the test begins, right? If you feel even a little bit nervous, there's no point in being nervous, right? Because yes, that's something like killer. You should have a big confidence in yourself, right? That is it. Which is your favorite letter, A, B, C, or D? Uh, I, I, I haven't really thought about that. Um, 
I think B. B. Okay, that's fine. I don't want to divert you at this point of time. But <laughs> for the questions that you think that you don't have a very particular answer, oh, right? Yes, sir. So for that, I mean, as an inference, you can use your favorite letter out of these four. Mm -hmm. that is it. Mm -hmm. right. This is just, you know, a gimmick. <laughs> mm -hmm. That is it that most of the students do. That's it now. So we already discussed good thing is that you seem to be completely set for this, right? And you know what things are to be carried now. What are the things uh, you need to do as a student? I mean, most of the student, uh, they need to do during the test, right? See, uh, it's a very strange habit that you must have found in many, even during the school exam and all that. As and when the question paper comes to them, you know, they start, uh, you know, just turning over the pages. In a way, they have never seen a test paper. Right? <laughs> so that basically is not a thing that any student must do, right? Let me tell you that during the test, you have to pace yourself, right? You need to maintain a momentum, right? A good, calm and composed mind always helps, right? So you need to get yourself determined for the test. You need to focus on the test. These three hours, 180 minutes, right? <coughs> Excuse me. You can do it in the best way. I mean, either you go with a full confidence and remember that confidence basically is a pill that, you know, it is something which is uh, perennial, right? That it will keep on giving you, once you have got this pill of confidence, it keeps on giving you more confidence, right? And then you feel that you have got a great concentration. So these things are synchronized with each other, confidence and concentration, right? So pace yourself during the test, right? But don't work so fast that you start making careless errors, right? This is the difference mm -hmm. between the confidence and the overconfidence, okay? On the other hand, I would suggest you that don't get yourself bogged down on any one question, right? There is a particular amount of time that you need to focus upon that. I can guarantee that whatever test you have done here with the test prep card, right full and test okay these must have given you a great experience of the heat and dust that you feel during the test time mm, yes sir. so whenever the heat this heat or dust whatever comes to you you can just shrug it off right that's it so my advice to you is that don't get bogged down in any one of the question now feel free to skip back and forth between questions within a section if you feel that you are comfortable with this. Now play the percentages. It means that always eliminate as many answer choices as possible. Okay. And then make an educated guess, not a random one. Right? Skipping doesn't mean that, okay, you have skipped all whatever options that you are having, right? Definitely your subconscious mind says that, uh, that this is the answer which I think is most suitable, right? So you rule out the chances of any random guess, okay? If you have no idea, okay, then quickly guess your favorite letter and move on, okay? I'm telling you. Otherwise, it may spoil your time, your energy, and your concentration for another question. But it's, it's a truth that if you have idea about the question, you will be making a fast guess, you will be choosing the right choice and you will proceed for them. Right? That's it. And if that doesn't come to mind the first place, give yourself some time. You know what actually happens that uh, in order to answer an answer in the right way, you also need to understand the question in the right way. If you don't understand the question, you won't be able to answer a question properly. So reading everything, whichever is given to you in the name of the question is very important. And that has to be done with a calm and concentrated mind. There's never to feel any sort of nervousness, right? I mean, we have seen many students that who have not done even a single question, even they do well. And you have done plenty of papers, full length papers, and you know what you are capable of, right? So whenever you feel nervous or something, you know, uh, 
anything which is troubling you during the time of the test, just think about your strength. That I have done this. I've got a very good backup. I know each and everything. I know the way. When I asked you, you said that, okay, you know the test center. Right. It means you need not ask anyone. So once the test center is known to you and the test paper is known to you, this is a win-win situation. Am I right? Yes. No. So the thing is that if you are running out of the time in a particular section, there would be four sections for math calculator, non-calculator. For English, it would be reading as well as language and writing. So whenever you are running out of the time in a section, use the last 20 seconds to fill up in your favorite letter on every question you don't get to. Okay. okay. Now, so. change answers, right? Erase the bubbles where you have which you have where you have darkened the oval when you have a valid reason for doing so. Right? Don't change them on a last minute. I mean, in a hunch or whim, right? That is it. Now, check your assumptions. Make sure that you are answering the question asked and not the one you thought was going to be asked. That's why it is very important to understand the question. If you understand the question, you would definitely be able to answer the, get the right answer, right? Remember that you are allowed to write anything you want in the test booklet, right? But make full use of it. Do math calculations and do draw the diagrams. Many students, you know, they are not doing well in diagrams or data sufficiency because they think only by reading the data they would be able to make a guess. No, please do it. <coughs> okay. Now, underline keywords in the reading passages. Cross out answer choices you sure that these are wrong. Okay. And circle questions you want to come back to. Right. You think that, okay, I'm not able to, going to do it at this point of time. Just circle these questions. Right. And most importantly, be careful not to make any stray marks on your answer sheet. Right. The test is graded by a machine and a machine cannot always tell the difference between an accidental mark and an intentionally filled in answer. So please avoid this, right? Now, check frequently to make sure you are answering the question in the right spots. Are you getting my point? Uh, yes, sir. Yeah. And remember that you don't have to attempt every question to do well. Just be sure to fill in answer for every question you don't attempt. So yes. yes. Sir. Right. Now, yes, sir. here we are going to discuss something about, you know, the reading uh, and the language and writing, right, section. That is it. Now, read all the answer choices before you decide which is the best. I can tell you, and you also just visualize what I'm telling you. Most of the students, you know what they feel that if there are four options or five options, right? In that you will be finding that two options are identical. Am I right? Uh -huh. Out of the five options given for three, you can use the what? Po, P O E process of elimination. Right? So after doing this, after applying this process of elimination, out of five options for three options, now you are left with two. Okay. For these two options, you'll be finding that something is identical and you are having a great, you know, you are having trouble in that. Over there, make inference, a strong guess. Right? That is it. Think of a context for an unfamiliar word. If you are not able to understand a word, think of a context. This context, this activity may help you come up with the words meaning, the proper meaning of the word. Right? Yes, sir. Now, 
the words which are unfamiliar to you okay you can break it down in recognizable parts for example prefixes suffixes roots so that you are able to catch the real essence of the word right now consider secondary meaning of the words if the first the primary meaning is not coming to you immediately just consider the secondary meaning of the words if none of the answer choices seem to be right to you then what you should do take another look this we have already discussed that you have to apply this process of elimination right and in terms of the words in context of a word a word may have more than one meaning right so this is it when you have a choice tackle reading passages with familiar subject before passages with unfamiliar ones now make use of the introductory part of the passage just to get get the crux of the passage or just to know in which direction it would be leading to okay or just to get yourself very well acquainted with the text right read as rapidly as you can with understanding but do not force yourself do not rush right that is it now as you read the opening sentences try to predict parallelly what are the passages about right now when you tackle the questions use any line references given to you to help in the passages are you getting my point yes sir now base your base your answer only on what is written in the passage not on what you know from other books or courses that's why it is called what evidence based passages okay now one thing i can tell you that in graph analysis question take time to evaluate the graph levels and axis okay it's very important be mindful that you will often need to integrate information from the reading passage with what is presented in the graph right now about the vocabulary the vocabulary in context question typically involve unusual meaning of word you know right in that case be sure you read enough of the text in which the word appears so that you will be able to figure exactly how the word is being used in the passage okay i mean to say the word has to be in synchronization or in context right that is it now here uh do not i would advise you do not hesitate to come back to the question if you are unsure a question that initially seems confusing right it will be far easier if you are giving it a second attempt or if you are reading that question for the second time why because the pressure it has created on your mind you have left that question you have gone to another questions other questions and now you have solved it right so your pressure is eased out and when you look into the question for the second time you find that okay it's very easy right because by that time you have gained the momentum and everything right in the same way you know in mathematics and all uh mathematics basically if you remember the formula and all right then there will be no question and uh, no problem okay in mathematics i mean uh, there are two sections you know where to use calculator and where not to use calculator so you should be knowing that how to use calculator that's very important we have the your teachers here at test prep card they must have given you all tips and tricks as how to use calculator mm -hmm. right so that is it and it would also be very much possible that the non calculator section you would be able to do before the stability time period 
right so remember it's a sat test right you are able you have already done plenty of questions a big repository of question if in that anything is wrong you know where you were wrong which is the best way right that's why i must have seen that your uh, score one after another test is raised okay in first test you were on something in second test you are on this score in third you are on this score right so just take this test as your mock test session right where without any fear and nervousness and without any pressure you were doing that the real sad would not be so different to that it would be more or less a replica of whatever you have already practiced you are getting my point yes yeah, sir so do very well now you need not do any test right just relax be calm and composed which you are already here right and after the test just send let us know how you have done that is it so this yes, was sir. all we just want to tell you these are very general things but very very important this is all for your conditioning that's it okay yes sir anything else you like to ask oh no sir not really fine so all mm -hmm. the very best right okay. thank you sir and after the test we would definitely like you to share your experience with yes, us sir. right yes, that is it sorry thank you tuna all the best thank you sir thank you thank, thank you, you.